This resource video will provide you with an overview of the Title I Part A Schoolwide Program Plan or Campus Improvement Plan stakeholders requirement being monitored as part of the random validation process being conducted by the Federal Program Compliance Division. Each LEA selected to participate in the random validation process for the Title I Part A program has been provided with the name of one school-wide program campus that was also randomly selected. The LEA will be responsible for submitting the documentation requested for only that one particular Title I Part A school-wide program campus. The program requirement being validated is a school-wide program plan or campus improvement plan stakeholders. The Every Student Succeeds Act, also referred to as ESSA, states that an eligible school operating a school-wide program shall develop a comprehensive plan that is developed with the involvement of parents and other members of the community to be served and individuals who will carry out such plan, including teachers, principals, other school leaders, paraprofessionals present in the school, administrators, the local educational agency to the extent feasible, tribes and tribal organizations present in the community, and if appropriate, specialized instructional support personnel, technical assistance providers, school staff, if the plan relates to a secondary school, students, and others individuals determined by the school. The LEA will need to submit two items of documentation related to this requirement. Keep in mind that documenting overall compliance for a program requirement may require several forms of documentation to be maintained locally and available upon request by TEA and or an auditor. To ensure overall compliance with program requirements, LEA should refer to the Title I Part A Program Guide and or other program-related resources that reference the multiple forms of documentation required to be maintained locally. The documentation requested for this submission during the random validation process may not include all forms of documentation that are required to be maintained locally. The documentation required for CIP item 1.1 is the relevant page or relevant pages of the current school year's campus improvement plan that includes a list of stakeholders involved in the development of the plan. The stakeholder listing shall include the individuals by name and their roles for the required stakeholder groups they represent. Please do not submit the campus improvement plan in its entirety only submit the relevant page or pages that are referenced here in the acceptable documentation. The ESSA statute states that the school-wide program plan or campus improvement plan is to be developed with the involvement of various stakeholder groups. Such stakeholders include parents, other members of the community to be served, individuals who will carry out such plan, including teachers, principals, other school leaders, and paraprofessionals present in the school, administrators, including administrators of programs described in other parts of this title, such as Title I Part C and Title I Part D, if applicable, the local educational agency to the extent feasible, tribes and tribal organizations present in the community, if appropriate, specialized instructional support personnel, technical assistance providers, and school staff, if the plan relates to a secondary school, it should include students and other individuals determined by the school. Please note that the statute language includes plural references, which means that there would need to be more than one stakeholder involved for the groups referenced. During our review, we will particularly be looking for the following required groups of stakeholders, parents, other members of the communities to be served, individuals who will carry out such plan, including teachers, principals, other school leaders, and paraprofessionals present in the school, administrators, tribes and tribal organizations present in the community, and if the plan relates to a secondary school, students. A secondary school includes a campus offering instruction for students in grades six and up. 
We understand that there may not be more than one stakeholder available for a small campus, and we will take that into consideration when conducting our review of the documentation. If this is the case, please make a note in the comment section of the submission packet cover page advising us that such stakeholders are not available to meet the statutory requirement. For CIP item 1.1, there are several issues that may result in the LEA receiving an improvement needed status. The LEA should be aware of these potential issues as they prepare their documentation for submission. Potential issues include that the auditable documentation requested was not submitted. Another potential issue is that the documentation submitted did not include the individual stakeholders by name. Another potential issue is that the documentation submitted did not include the stakeholder roles for each of the individual stakeholders listed for us to be able to make a determination if the campus met the statutory requirements. And additionally, another issue is that prior year documentation was submitted instead of current year documentation. The documentation required for CIP item 1.2 includes meeting agendas, meeting notes or minutes, and participant rosters or sign-in sheets for one meeting held during the campus planning process, documenting the involvement of the statutory required stakeholders in the development of the school program plan or campus improvement plan. There are several documentation requirements that the LEA should be aware of. Although it is highly unlikely that the CIP development process would take place in one meeting, considering that the process should be comprehensive in nature, we are only requesting documentation for one meeting. The documentation submitted should provide evidence that the CIP stakeholders listed in the documentation reference in CIP item 1.1 were involved in the CIP development process The standard meeting documentation that an LEA should maintain locally includes meeting agendas, meeting notes or minutes, and sign-in sheets. Please note that documentation for virtual meetings is an acceptable form of documentation. Given the increased use of virtual meeting environments, participant rosters that include the meeting title, meeting date, and stakeholder names and roles would be acceptable substitutes for the more traditional sign-in sheets. This eliminates the need of a participant signature. Please refer to the table referenced on this slide to determine what is required on meeting documentation and what is considered best practice. Meeting agendas should include the meeting title, campus name, date, and time it is a best practice to include the location of the meeting. Meeting notes or minutes should include the meeting title, campus name, date, and time. It is best practice to include the location of the meeting, stakeholder names of those involved in the process, and stakeholder roles. The participant roster should include the meeting title, campus name, date, time, stakeholder names of those in attendance, and stakeholder roles it is best practice to include the location of the meeting. Please note that parents may not be LEA employees in order to fill the parent roles on the committee. We will now look at requirements associated with program requirement number two. For CIP item 1.2, there are several issues that may result in the LEA receiving an improvement needed status. The LEA should be aware of these potential issues as they prepare their documentation for submission. Potential issues include the auditable documentation requested was not submitted. Another potential issue is that the documentation submitted does not reference a CIP development process. An LEA should make every effort to ensure that their documentation submitted, such as the meeting agendas and meeting minutes and or notes, make reference specifically to the CIP development process. Another potential issue is that the documentation submitted for item 1.2 does not align with the list of stakeholders that was submitted to meet the CIP item 1.1 documentation requirement. 
For CIP item 1.2, we will be verifying that the stakeholders submitted for CIP item 1.1 are the same as the stakeholders noted in the documentation submitted for CIP item 1.2. Finally, another issue is that the prior year documentation was submitted instead of current year documentation. Please note that it is customary for an LEA to have begun and completed their CIP development process in the months preceding the 21-22 school year. Documentation dated in the months preceding the 21-22 school year is acceptable as long as the documentation show evidence that the LEA was engaging in the process for the current school year, which in this case is the 2021-2022 school year. This concludes the presentation of information for this program requirement. If you have any questions, please contact us via telephone at 512-463-9310 or via email at essa support at tea.texas.gov.